Welcome to the Cambridge Assessment Podcast. I'm Ashley Capaldi and I'm here to introduce a special three-part series guest hosted by Paul Ellis and Melanie Dunn. According to the UN Refugee Agency, there are currently four million refugee children out of school. One of the UN's sustainable development goals is to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. In this third episode, Chloe Shaw and William Saville talk about the initiatives Cambridge Assessment has in place to help refugees access education, English language tests and funding. In the third of our podcasts, we are talking to a couple of colleagues about what large education organisations can do to support refugees in their education. In this podcast, we're speaking to Chloe and Will about some of the initiatives taking place at Cambridge Assessment to support refugee education. Hi, Chloe. Hi there. Hi, Will. Hi, Paul. Can you introduce us to who you are? Just tell us just very briefly what you do in this organisation as your day job. Sure. So I'm Chloe Shaw and I'm Head of Alliance Management. So essentially I'm responsible for looking at the organisation's partnerships with externals. Mm-hmm. And I'm Will Savile and I'm uh, the Business Development Manager for the UK and Ireland. And I look after one of our products called the Occupational English Test, uh, which is for healthcare professionals who need to prove their English language to register and work in the UK. Excellent, thank you. And we're going to be talking in more detail about that in a little while, aren't we? So we've got three main initiatives we're going to be talking about today. The first of which is the development of two free massive open online courses or MOOCs. Is that correct? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So Chloe, can, can you tell us a bit more about actually what a MOOC is and how it works before we get started on the detail? Sure. Um, so a MOOC, um, as you said, is a massive open online course. Um, And it's a great way to reach many, many learners um, who may be located in in different countries or who may not be able to access sort of traditional education. So when we started out looking at our refugee initiative, we realised that we didn't really have the channels to some of the people we were trying to reach. And MOOCs for us were a great way of reaching them and also enabling them to have the social interaction with each other that that is actually so important to their learning as well. And how easy is a MOOC to put together? Um, well, so we worked with um, a partner called FutureLearn, so um, they uh, provide the social learning platform. We provided a lot of the content. Um, I mean, I can talk you through the two different MOOCs that we yes, have, please, if yeah. that's mm-hmm. useful. Okay, so one um, was to address um, a need around um, forced migrants in the UK, finding it very difficult to access higher education, a wealth of information that they need to sort of navigate through. Um, So the MOOC really was to help signpost the key stages on that journey, um, making sure they have the right level of English, for example, to get into higher education, that they understand the application process, what makes a good course for them or choice of university. Um, So signalling all of those things that would be important to them on their journey. What was really nice about that MOOC as well was it brought in additional partners. We worked very closely with the British Council, UCAS, the University of Essex, to really bring all the experts in to create the content that would be relevant for for those accessing the course. Yeah, and we had two, um, two people who were refugees themselves actually introducing the course. So... You know, people had inspirational people who had made made it to university who were kind of guiding them through the process, which I think people found quite helpful. Yeah, the feedback about that was that they really appreciated having a chance to speak to, to people that almost like them that have, have gone through this journey and through the process and can actually give them, you know, advice and on, on the ground level support. Um, and then the second um, MOOC that we developed was actually for people who are volunteering with refugees. So there are many people, I'm sure, you know, probably listening to this podcast as well, who are keen to be involved. Um, And we developed a MOOC specifically for people who maybe didn't have formal teaching expertise um, and wanted to know what was a good way to prepare themselves for teaching in quite challenging contexts. Um, And that MOOC, we actually, um, again, it was on the FutureLearn platform, but we um, worked on that with an organisation called Crisis Classroom, who do a lot of work supporting volunteers um, and actually going into refugee communities or camps and helping with their education. And that MOOC actually had quite a, a wide reach and it was reaching about 10,000 participants each each run. Um, and what was really nice about that, it was actually um, it won an award by an alliance um, organisation to, to highlight the um, partnerships that have gone into creating the MOOC. Yeah, that was um, that was a great success and people are still continuing to, to show interest in that. It's obviously having a good impact. 
Excellent. I was going to ask you generally about the impact. So about 10,000 people tuning in to the one for teachers. How many people got involved in, in the other one? Um, so the other one, I think we had around 7,000 mm-hmm. and our target was actually pretty low. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we were aiming for about 700. So we were delighted when kind of in the first mm-hmm. run, we were hitting really quite, quite uh-huh. big figures. Um, in terms of the people you know, attending the course, a lot of them were refugees, but there were also teachers of refugees mm-hmm. who just appreciated that guidance that they could then pass on mm-hmm. to the people that they were working with. And how long were each of the runs of each of these courses? So I think both of them were three weeks, is that right? Okay. Yeah, and we've yeah. rerun them a, a couple of times mm-hmm. now, and we're planning on rerunning the volunteer uh, one again, um, given how popular it's been. Yeah. So it contains their use, or the kind of things that people can tune into as and when they want to, when they want to go and volunteer, for example, and people are, are genuinely finding them things which they get a lot out of from what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, we've yeah. had some great feedback actually through through the platform. We can see people's sort of comments mm-hmm. um, and the, the people on the kind of course learn as much from each other mm-hmm. as from the kind of the mentors and the people mm-hmm. providing the inputs. So we've seen examples of um, teachers sharing some of their resources um, so that, you know, others can then benefit, Mm -hmm. um, perhaps who haven't had the teaching experience before. Actually, the MOOCs that I've done in the past, I've seen there's lots of networking possibilities. People do tend to interchange ideas and Mm -hmm. it's it's quite fascinating to see the kind of things that people come up with from across the world. Have you found that lots of people from all sorts of countries have been involved in both of these MOOCs? Yeah, with both of them, even the one that's specifically for refugees in the UK, we found that um, a lot of people who are sort of on their journey towards the UK have been interacting with the materials as well, Mm -hmm. knowing that that's kind of their end goal. Mm -hmm. Um, They may not be making an application to university maybe for a year or so, Mm -hmm. maybe longer, um, but they're still very interested in preparing themselves. Excellent. So you say there's going to be at least one more run of the MOOC and so how would people want to find out about it if they, they want to get on? Yeah so we basically we'll, we'll work with our partner the Future Learn platform to, mm-hmm. to run the MOOC and we'll be publishing it through our social media channels and our website okay. uh, and Future Learn will, will probably promote it as well for us as, as they have done in previous runs. Mm-hmm. Excellent thank you. So MOOC's a very interesting initiative in itself. It's on, on to the second one we're going to talk about today is about donating hardware and we as an organisation we're, we're quite a large organisation these days Cambridge Assessment we have a number of items that we use that we have used that we no longer need to use so can you tell us more about the initiative for donating hardware to refugee organisations? Yeah sure um, so as you say we're, we're a large organisation we do obviously refresh the kind of equipment that we're using on a fairly regular basis and that does mean that there are items that are no longer in use um, we decided that we would clean these up and actually donate them to refugee charities. So the most popular things are laptops, um, which people can use to access either our learning materials or to, you know, to interact with other kinds of educational content. Um, and then mobile phones are also very popular um, from the learning point of view, but also as being, you know, a bit of a lifeline, a way of staying in contact with family. So I think so far we've donated probably over 100 different items Um, and if there's anybody listening who is working with a charity that would appreciate donations of this sort, we would definitely urge them to get in touch with us because it's something we're going to be doing on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. What's really nice about this part of the initiative as well is that many organisations can replicate it because most organisations who access secure information on laptops will have to have their um, hardware cleaned anyway before it's either destroyed or or, another company recycles it elsewhere. So it's something that any organisation that goes through this process can also implement quite easily. Mm-hmm. Not there's no real additional cost to doing so. So mm-hmm. it's quite a nice, a nice thing to do. Yeah, and we've seen, um, we've seen, you know, uh, items that people have been using here going as far as like Lebanon, Greece, the camps in France. Um, so they're they're being widely used as well mm-hmm. as just in the UK. Excellent. And who do you work with to distribute the the hardware? Um, So we work with um, a number of different organisations. We've worked with Norwich City Council. Um, We've worked with um, Cambridge Refugee Resettlement Campaign, um, Refugee Youth Service, um, an organisation called Jesuit Word Learning, um, and a number of different youth charities. Mm -hmm. And have you seen pictures of the hardware in action? Yeah, what's really nice is when um, we get pictures of them actually accessing our Uh MOOC as well. So really? (laughs) By by the actual equipment? Yeah, by the equipment that we've donated. So... Um, it's often, often as well if the charity wants us to we will um, upload content on there that we've create, curated so it's easy for them to um, access in all in one place as well. 
I guess because, I mean, one of the things which we've been talking about a lot to do with refugees is that they want to access education. It's just become very clear to us the more that we talk to them. They, thus, they, they don't want to give up on learning. They really want to do it. So to have an initiative like this, giving them the hardware and giving them essentially the content as well, then that's, that's a fantastic initiative, which is really very impactful in many ways. Mm-hmm. Excellent, thank you. And the third initiative we're going to hear about is the exam bursaries that Cambridge English is offering for their exams and particularly for their occupational English tests for healthcare professionals as well. So, Will, can you tell us a bit more about these exams and tests and what's available? Yeah, so for the occupational English test, it's um, an English test for the healthcare professionals. So, um, OET, as, as, as we use an acronym, um, has donated 60 free tests um, for refugee nurses and doctors who want to re-enter the work for so they need to evidence their English language ability to be able to get their PIN number with with the respective regulator Um, and then we also have our Cambridge English qualifications which Chloe knows a bit more about. Yeah sure so when we um, developed the um, higher education MOOC we wanted people to be able to take our exams um, at the kind of appropriate level for university entry and for that not to be a barrier so um, we made some bursaries available um, to people um, using one of our exams called um, advanced so it's a, it's a fairly advanced level of English um, but actually what we found was there was interest from people who wanted um, to prove their English at a slightly lower level so we have expanded that out and there's now you know a number of our English qualifications um, can be taken in the form of a bursary. Um, how, they, how a student who's interested would actually go about that would be that they would um, work with our partner organisation RefuAid Will, do you want to talk a little bit more about that process? Yeah, so one of the challenges we had as Cambridge Assessment was actually accessing these learners. So we knew there was a need for, for exams and bursaries, and which we were happy to support with. But we wanted to make sure that any learner that accessed an exam had had the preparation support needed to be able to, to you know, succeed and, and sort of do well on the exam. So we, we've been working very closely with a, a refugee charity called Refuay to sort of um, provide support for refugees um, on the whole scale of things. So, you know, from opening a bank account um, all the way through to English language support mm-hmm. to helping them find jobs and get accommodation. Uh, what's nice about RefuAid is that they also partner with, um, with with language providers and training providers. So often a school would provide the, the English language course for free. We would provide the exam at the end of it and then the refugee would be able to go on to the next stage of their journey. Great. So, so there's, there's many opportunities then for people to access our qualifications and, and exams and, and tests here via a means which they wouldn't otherwise have through people like RefuAid. So RefuAid work pretty much worldwide and and so anybody from anywhere could access these, could they? Yeah, they can do. So they can get in touch directly with, with organisations like mm-hmm. RefuAid. There are other partner organisations that we work with across the UK mm-hmm. and we're always interested to hear from other partner organisations who may wish to, to work with us in any sort of capacity. Mm-hmm. So to, to look on the Cambridge Assessment website and, and um, get in touch via the refugee um, page that we have on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I suppose the other thing to say is we don't claim to be the experts at all in mm-hmm. any way. I mean, we're the experts in you know learning and assessment, but not necessarily in the specific mm-hmm. needs of refugees. Yeah. There are many organisations out there that work, work much more closely, um, you know, with with people who are in these circumstances. Um, and we're always looking for partners to work mm-hmm. with. Um, something else that we can offer which you know may not seem much is actually we can help with connecting people um, and networking so you know if a particular charity um, or kind of youth group needs connecting with somebody who can help them with something else you know maybe we can help with that as well it's not all about specific projects that we're working on Mm -hmm. and we're very open to suggestions of you know new things that we could be doing that could have an even greater impact. Excellent. So the challenge is out there to the listeners if they have any particular idea in mind or they want to partner with an organisation that can in turn give the pit that they can't do, then they should come to us and we'll we'll put the, the details on, on the website close to this as well so people can see what they need to do. They need to contact us. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for, for telling us about these three particular initiatives and good luck with the rest of the work on this as well. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Cambridge Assessment Podcast. You can find more on our website at www.cambridgeassessment.org.uk. Just search for Podcast Gallery. We are also on YouTube and iTunes. Leave us a comment wherever you're listening if you'd like to get in touch about any of our refugee support projects and we'll get back to you.